Okay, drilling down through here, we had a mishap because there was a hollow back in on this side here and a divot actually went in and, and caught our drill. We hadn't got down to our depth yet, but I knew I was going to have to do something with it, so I pulled it out and we rotary bird out this whole thing here. I wasn't bothering getting you guys involved in seeing uh, me struggle with getting into the hole there, but I got it sealed up and we come back here and we're re-zeroed in on our piece here and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to drill down and tap to put our plug in there after we have that down in there I'm probably going to angle slightly and then come in just a little bit closer to this side of the web over here because this is almost a straight in bore but this one here had a had a rough casting that came in and it wasn't right at the mouth it was down in there a ways and uh, and we were dead nuts on on our layout line and and right in in there but this cavity over on this side right here is uh, just razor thin that whole that whole section is only like 200 thousands inside there but it was like 350 or so out here um, all right now of course we got the uh, Chinese tap here and um, the 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 real tap size uh, for the uh, 10 millimeter one lead is actually nine millimeters um, it, I have a chart over there on the wall and it calls out for um, it calls out for a 2364s but I, I like to especially when you got a, uh, uh, a four fluted not so high quality tap I want to make sure that I have more than enough root or minor diameter or starting hole I want it as tight as possible um, the other two sizes that's real close is the T or the nine millimeter which we don't have a nine millimeter uh, we don't have any millimeter drills in my collection at all uh, so T would be the closest and S is one size down from there and I'm actually going to go ahead and start with the S and then if I if I need to I will go ahead I'm going to lower this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and, and then put, put the T in there and then tap out my hole. Alright, now we, uh, we took a measurement here and that's, I'm just going to give it the whole benefit of the doubt. 600 deep. If we got that 600 deep, we should be doing real well. So I'm going to go ahead and call that zero. And we're going to go 600 from there. Two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, and there's six hundred. We're going to go ahead and we're going to look down in there with a, a mirror now. Crazy. Woke up this morning, four inches of snow, and it's almost melted. And that hole looks darn good down in there. All right. Let's go ahead and measure our hole. What we have here. And. We're at uh, 348, 349, and this is 356. So this is as close as we can get to. And actually, let me see what that plug tap actually measures out. <clears throat> you know, because I, you know, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to tap this without. This is aluminum, so. As long as that tap, the tap will start in there. All right, we just went down to the bottom with the starting tap, and that took really well. I don't think we're going to need the plug tap. We're going to go straight to the bottoming tap and get that started in there by hand. And our tap follower here. 
we brought it out so we could check a depth there but we'll bring it back in here to our zero mark so we can follow the tap down a little more aluminum tap Okay, now <clears throat> I do want to break the edge a little bit and then I want to put just a little bit of a spot face on there. Okay, now I'm just doing this by hand. Because all I want to do is just barely break that. I like that. Let me blow this out here. All right, that operates pretty good. You know, I think that that washer, I kind of like that. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna leave it just like that. We know that we're faced off here with that bore and everything. Now we're doing this for the second time here. After we do this, we're going to do a pressure and soap test, make sure that we didn't leak through anywhere. There's 400. There's a 600 right there. Okay, let's come out from there. Okay, put a rubber nozzle on here and squeeze the trigger and hope we don't hear no air. And we do hear air so we have a breach somewhere. We had some time to sleep on this um, yesterday when we had the mishap and we drilled down we could feel a little bit of uh, uh, like interrupted cut I mean when you're drilling on the bridge port and you got your hand, hand on there you can you can feel and uh, I could feel that something wasn't quite right and and I wish I would have had the tunnel vision to see but back into the root back in here was uh, a hollow that's uh, this this, these look like there's a lot of difference between these webs right here but down inside actually opens up a little bit more the way it's casted out regardless I pierced through the side so I then thought I would just rotary burr open this up get in there with a small cup and uh, and, and 
heliarch it up, come back up and fix, fix up the surface right here and you saw that that wasn't going to work. Okay, you can't go in there and perform miracles when you can't, you can't fully get there and see exactly what's going on and you don't have the right <clears throat> you don't have the right gas flowing in, you don't have the right arc, you don't have it clean enough. Cleaning up is probably the most important because this aluminum and this area here where all the contaminants from the antifreeze have been floating around in there, this thing wasn't tanked or anything else. This is actually off the bike and in here. Um, so what I'm going to do, we're going in the other room and I'm going to get a ball in mill and we're going to start whittling this area. <clears throat> maybe all the way back into this area back in here but I want to be able to get in there at least with this number six this is a this is a nice comfortable cup and if I can get all the way in there and I, I know I can get enough coverage and if I get it open enough I know I can get I can clean far enough away from the area we need to patch once we patch that or we feel it's patched I'm gonna pressure test this before I start printing my way back out of here and creating the original shape right back into this. And we know we're going to be refacing the face of this head and, and I'm going to reshape this and I'm going to probably do a, a couple um, uh, tricks on the way out to, to do a, a, a puddle weld creating this shape and keeping that jacket open so we don't have to get in there too much and make a mistake with a rotor. One thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to take any more off of this face here then we can help with any accidents. Um, we're going to be well building it back up like this but we can't have any divots and we have we have a probably a millimeter that we could play with that we could take off of this face without affecting the uh, the run of, of the bike and um, and we plan on only having to take maybe five thousandths at the most. All right Let's uh, let's get in there on the mill and start whittling away on this. <laughs> I had I had to laugh because I was looking for uh, ball end mills and this one inch right here. I think it's a one inch. Yeah, one inch, and it's almost exactly the right size. But I'm going. Oh yeah, you go ahead and you grab it with that, and you throw the part on the floor. And uh, so I, I found a half inch two fluter which is going to be kind enough that I can get in there and get started. If we feel confident and we want to like open up the top or something like that after we got in there and we kind of get a feel of it, we'll, we'll, we'll play with that or go to a three quarter or something. I have several of these uh, ball end mills that I hang around laying around in different drawers here so I can, I'll, I'll hunt them up. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold this on here the same way that we held it to do the <clears throat> the millwork on the top there and I'm kind of I want to kind of get into this opening over here first so I think I think that's going to be a a good start of a clamping location right there all right and let's see we'll get this other one here we're down there pretty good. I think we'll we'll put this one right up at the top here. Okay. That's going to be nice and stout, okay? And we got aluminum tap here. All right, let's, we're going to clear off a few things. We don't need our drills. We're just going to be making chips here, so we don't need all the tap and stuff. We're going to keep this on handy because we're after our wall, we're going to be going back down in with that. We may need our mirror to look around and a little flashlight and that. I think I think we're good to go. We're going to put the little red eye cap up here and tape measure on over here. All right, the rest of our stuff is over here. Okay, and we'll come down. We're gonna, we're gonna lock our feed 
in here so that we can control it up and down. Fish on. All right, that's what it sounds like. It always reminds me of that anyway. All right. And actually, we're going to go ahead and we're going to be using this container here. This was given to us by one of our viewers. It was made. It has a magnet on the bottom. Um, I, I have been using this full of uh, Alumatap and it dispenses it real nice. Comes out of that little dripped hole, okay, and then you can brush it around like that. There's only... There's only one little downfall to it, and it seems to run back down the stem, run over the container, and then, and, and, and then it's on your hands and fingers and everything else. Um, other than that, its function works perfect on it. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna come down a little bit. Here you go. I'm not sure how far back I'm gonna go, so I'm just gonna take it a little bit at a time here. And I'm almost, well, I'm gonna just continue going straight down for right now. This time we're going to set zero in on our travel in just so we know where we were traveling into. Okay. We're gonna stop and take a peek in here. All right, set zero here. We're gonna lift our quill out. We're gonna take a few pictures with our other camera, our uh, Note 4, so that we can progressively see where we're at at different points in time here, instead of moving the cameras around. Okay. I'm gonna try one more here. Let's see what those look like. Pretty good, pretty good. I like that. Okay, let's uh, let's go back to Whittle in here. And I think I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go down uh, probably another 300 past that right there. 200. 200 will look good. Okay, I know we're gonna need, in fact, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get uh, the cup I wanna be able to get in there so I can hold that cup at different angles. So I make sure that, so where I move and what I remove will be adequate by using that number six cup there would be great. You can see that half inch is just a little bit narrower than the number six cup. And I grabbed one of the old ones here so we don't get any fluid on it, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, I'm gonna wanna be able to angle down in here. So we're gonna, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna take almost a half inch more of this, this direction here so I can really work in because right down, because right down in, in there is where we have the, the breach 
down into that mess. I mean, you can look at this right here and you can see that, you know, it almost, I mean, it should have had some material there, but this, this hollow cavity back in here for that depth that we we're trying to pass is actually um, just really opened up in there and there's no, there was there was no material so you can't see that you can't see that far down into the hole and that was the problem I think something something like that should be good there okay that looks like about a half an inch on the width there I'm going to be hand walking it over so it's not going straight in. Okay, now I can go straight in for the last 50,000 or so. Okay, now we'll come across. Okay, we're going to get the air nozzle over here okay I'm gonna zoom you in here okay that's as that's okay that's as close as I can zoom you in see if I can get the light in here okay now I'm gonna point right in here right in there is where I need to get in and do the wall repair you can see how far back in that cavity went back in here well I tried getting in there with the rotary burr but there's just no way you're gonna get this is a little bit of my burr rotary burr down in here because I was trying to get that clean in there okay so we're gonna take we're gonna take and we're gonna mill right on through this back side here because you can see that there is no way that I'm gonna get a number six down in there unless I open up that other side on it the, over there and then I'm just gonna go ahead and and uh, metal print this uh, shape right back out of there and you know I, I need to get there I need to get there to be sound if I can't fix that then I can't fix none of this other stuff here all right go big or go home <laughs> I, I am home <laughs> and I'm still going big uh, all right I think I can probably stay out of your way most of it here and and uh, side here about 20,000 we're gonna see if we can get this cleaned up over here on this wall right here kind of over to or down to that that hole we want to try to see if we can see that okay and I'm gonna go ahead and open this side up over here Okay, we'll take a pause. Okay, that was my uh, my five minute warning for uh, dinner. And some leftover ham and bean soup, which you made yesterday, which is totally awesome. All right, nice nice warm winter. We actually had we had another two inches of snow today. I wasn't gonna bother posting it there, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what our total is now. It's just always been out there. <laughs> I give you a total of days on the, that'll be in the news I don't have to I don't have to broadcast that all right um, I'm uh, I'm really liking 
this is this is what I wanted to see. Now I need to go down until uh, until I I catch catch that hole or the breach down in here. And actually, I think I'm I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my rubber tip and I'm going to go ahead and soap. I'm going to soap this area right here, and we're going to see if we can see where the actual bubbling is under the the weld attempt that I got I was trying to reach of course I was trying to reach in there with a number five cup try to hold everything really small and dinky but there was just too much pollution down in there and that's uh, you know that was that was pushing the wish, wish list okay I've got you in as close as, um, as I think I can get you in here without hitting the table or moving it around I'm getting the this is what I'm putting in on uh, There's a rubber tip nozzle, and I'm holding it into the hole here. And I can hear, I can hear the air weeping just like we heard before. And uh, um, this is soap. And it is right around the corner, right, right, right in there. But it, it's like coming out of the pores. Okay, so now we're going to have to get in. We're going to come down in here with the ball end mill. We're going to try to get down in here a little bit closer into that area right there. I don't know if I'm actually just putting it in a pocket that's below that weld there, but that area right there, that's where we need to get in there and weld. And of course, this is my size tip of torch here that I want to weld with. So we may actually have to take a little bit more of this outside shell back a little bit. right in there about another quarter inch or so I can have that tungsten sticking out a little bit and I'll probably have to take this down here just a little bit more I'd rather stay away from taking any more off of this chamber right here because this is the compression chamber and I'm going to be rotary burn and I'm going to be filling on on the back side so I think I'm going to take some more of this outside out here I'd rather rather work on the water side or hold the the top cavity there this is more or less the compression side of it and this is solid and this is the, this inside gasket seam right here is where it holds the the compression so as long as I seal this up out of here there's no problem and the reason why I need to concentrate this really is because that compression that goes in in the opening and if when this valve is sealed the the pressure is going to be in this the the chamber between the valve and the combustion chamber and if there's any pressure or there's any leak then it's going to leak right into the coolant so we're going to repair that pressure test this hole before we breach this opening over here so we can use it to hold and actually do a pressure test all right i'm going to bring down the cutter we're going to whittle in there some more Okay, there's 200,000 more. I 
I'm just taking it off of that back side over there so that that way I can get in there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start taking a light little bit right off this space right here and come in. Clean that. I'm going to come straight down. Okay, now I'm going to come out of there. I'm going to blow that out and take a look at it. Okay, I can actually see a little bit of bubbling over in the far side over here, so it's not necessarily that it's actually the hole there. So the weld where I was, I was trying to I was trying to create a molten puddle and try to I saw the actual hole, you know, I rotary bird right into it, but there was no way that I could get it to join 100% all the way around on it one shot there. I just reaching down in a hole, you just you you're limited on what you can do. All right. All right, I'm going to shut you off for a minute because I got to get around and I got to take a close look at this uh, without worrying about filming right now. We came down, I blew in some air and we're pretty close to the, the location there of the, the small area where it's almost breached. I can get this number six tip in here now, pretty close every, everywhere that I need to get this in here. I, I believe I'll be able to do um, pretty good. If not, I can rotary bird just a little bit out of here or off of this edge over here. I, I'll be able to get pretty much all of that right in there. And that is the area I need to concentrate right there where the tip is. All right, I want to build that out. I want to build it out to about right here. Okay, I want plenty of material around here. Um, so what I'm going to do is get in here and I'm going to well repair this area. Then we're going to set up and we're going to pressure test this area right here and prove that I don't have any leak coming in here because this is going to be a, an open area from the compression chamber up against this valve. You see the valve, the valve itself, I got it sitting somewhere here. Okay, you see the valve sits about that, that high, okay? So that area right there is all going to be open to the actual compression of the head. That's how this thing works. So this area here has got to be 100% sound. The same as this area right here from leaking any compression from the head. And then, of course, then you have lower water pressure uh, area out in here, but we still have to have 100% seal on there. Okay, but we need to repair that and uh, that'll be the next step so um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do some rotary burn and I'm gonna do some uh, dressing up and cleaning up and then I'm gonna bring you back into the, uh, the the picture when we're in there and I'm gonna try my best to give you a shot of watching me repair this spot and fill this back in <laughs> 